Aloha everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Welcome to episode two of the Skincare 201 series where I take a deeper dive into some topics that are really popular in the skincare community and share my opinion, my stance, my belief when it comes to these things. I'm sorry if I'm struggling to concentrate. My neighbor right outside has been mowing his lawn for over an hour even though his lawn is only the size of a Kia. Oh, I'm so done with it. It's so loud on my mic. <laughs> Anyway, if you're not familiar with this series, feel free to go to episode one where I talk about how you can read ingredient lists, how to decipher them, what to look for, what to avoid, all that good stuff. But in today's episode, I specifically wanted to talk about fragrance in skincare. This is something that is really popular on my channel. If you guys have watched literally any of my videos, I'm constantly talking about why I avoid fragrance in my skincare products. And in the past, about 10 months ago, I did make a video detailing why I personally avoid fragrance in my skincare products. If you guys are interested in learning more about fragrance, what ingredients are classified as fragrance, my personal belief system of what I like to avoid. I will link the last video I made. I go into a little bit more detail there. This video is more focused on addressing some common themes, questions, and concerns around fragrance and giving my personal opinion and input on the issue. But since then, fragrance and skincare has become a really controversial topic and I've also learned a lot since my last video and I wanted to share some of the progress that I've made because I definitely want you guys to be updated with all the new information that I've been getting in order to make sure that we're approaching this from as unbiased as a stance as possible. Now, when I say controversial, I mean controversial bitch. I've legit lost friends over fragrance in skincare or people who I thought were friends. Sometimes when people disagree in the skincare community, they disagree hard, which is why I want to start off this video by saying, I know you guys are intelligent. You guys watch my channel knowing that I am my own person. I have my own opinions, my own belief system, and that it is not the same for everyone else. There are plenty of other people on YouTube who have different opinions about the skincare, and that is the beauty of the skincare world. We all get to share our own individual views and opinions, compare them, have discussions, educate and edify each other, and that's what makes it so enjoyable. And at the end of the day, I'm really just trying to help you guys as much as possible learn how you can perfect your skincare routine with your own philosophy, but making sure you're equipped to understand what ingredients are, how to read ingredient lists, etc., etc. What makes this not fun though is getting into heated negative debates where people are attacking one another, breaking friendships, making accusations over something as trivial as skincare and talking about our different opinions. Like how stupid is that, that you would actually get frustrated enough to start attacking someone over something as trivial as skincare. Like bitch, it is not that big of a deal. And with the amount of times that I've seen this happen, I thought it would be a great time to just kind of revamp my stance on fragrance, share all my opinions and beliefs with you guys and start a conversation. All with positivity and respect. So let's get into it. My goal when I started on YouTube was not to be an expert in the skincare world, to know everything, to be the most informed, to be the most educating person. Absolutely not. My only intent in making YouTube videos was just to help make skincare a little bit easier to understand. And to this day, when I make videos, I never make videos intended for people who are crazy educated about skincare, chemists and dermatologists. No, I make it for people who probably don't know a lot about skincare, who are looking to learn more about it and want to have a basic understanding of ingredients. That's my intent. I try to break down really complicated topics and make them easier to understand for you guys to be able to enjoy your experience in the skincare world. And with that being said, throughout this whole video, I'm not going to be talking about the chemistry behind these ingredients. There are plenty of other amazing resources for that, dermatologists and chemists. I will link all of my many sources in the description box below. Feel free to go do your own research, ask your favorite dermatologist or favorite chemist. My goal is always to help empower you guys to educate yourselves, but also recognizing that I am not here to talk specifics, but rather just kind of share my overall opinion. So first off, what is fragrance? Fragrance is a lot of different things in skincare, but when you look at an ingredient list, fragrance can be classified as first the term fragrance, the actual term that you see listed on the back of a product, fragrant essential oils, of which there are many, including lavender essential oil, bergamot essential oil, ylang, -ylang essential oil, lime essential oil, etc., etc. And then fragrant components, which include limonene, linalool, geraniol, and others. So why is fragrance added to skincare products. Fragrance is typically added to create a sensorial experience for the person who is using the product. When using a moisturizer or a serum to be able to smell a bunch of different essential oils while using a skincare product that has a very distinct scent, it creates a sensorial experience that's very unique. And not gonna lie, it's really nice. There are so many skincare products that I love smelling because they just create this sensation that's so wonderful. 
Fragrance is also added as a marketing appeal and also to differentiate a brand from other brands. The more a company can create a positive experience for the user when they first pick up and try a product, the more likely the customer is going to buy their product and continue buying their product in the future because of that positive experience. And companies also count on that experience to differentiate themselves from other brands so that you won't be able to find that specific fragrance in any other type of product out there. You have to go back to brand A in order to get that experience. Now here's the thing, and this is going to be very controversial. In my opinion, fragrance is not terrible. It is not the worst thing in the world or the devil ingredient. As dramatic as I am in my videos, which bitch, I am dramatic as f <laughs> We all know that. And as much as I like to show my true dramatic knee-jerk reactions to different products and ingredients, in my opinion, fragrance is not the worst thing in the world. The reason why fragrance for most people is not going to be problematic for their skin. The majority of people in their lifetime likely won't experience a sensitivity to fragrance or essential oils or any types of ingredients that can be found in fragrant compounds. It's also not proven to be extremely damaging to the skin like some other ingredients can be and likely won't negatively affect the average user. However, that being said, Fragrance ingredients offer little to no actual benefits for the skin, but are more so just added for a sensorial aromatic experience, similar to what you would get when you're diffusing essential oils in your room, for example. In the general cosmetic industry, skin sensitivities are increasing. Dermatologists are seeing an increase in allergic response and allergens, contact dermatitis, and other issues that cause skin sensitivity. Brands are overwhelmingly starting to produce products that are aimed more towards sensitive skin. If you look at the online trends, the term sensitive skin has been going up and up and up over the years. And speaking from my personal experience, the number one concern that I see in my inbox, in my comment sections, on all my social media platforms is skin sensitivity. Now fun fact, you can have an allergic reaction or sensitivity to any ingredient, especially natural ingredients. It doesn't matter what kind of ingredient, you can have a sensitivity or a reaction to it. But fragrance and essential oils are commonly known allergens. They also are prone to oxidation, where the ingredients break down into sensitizing components. And a lot of ingredients can be adulterated to not be pure essential oils, for example, mixed with a lot of other chemical components that can cause negative reactions. Dermatologists are seeing an increase in contact dermatitis and a lot of them attribute that increase to fragrance in skincare. But the difference is in the ingredients role. Ingredients like aloe vera, niacinamide, licorice root extract are added into skincare products for the plethora of skin health benefits that they offer, while fragrance is added solely for the smell and not for any skin benefits. And often if any of those ingredients do have positive benefits for the skin, they're so unstable when exposed to air and light that they go through oxidation and break down into those sensitizing components. So now that we know what it is and why it's put in skincare, why am I so against it? Well, first off, I want to say my standards when it comes to skincare formulas, skincare ingredients, and products is very, very, very high. <laughs> Painfully high to the tune that the majority of people will likely disagree with the opinions that I have about skincare. I avoid fragrance, high concentrations of denatured alcohol, witch hazel, ethanol, menthol, and all of these ingredients aren't necessarily bad, but they are known to have some irritation potential and there are much better alternative ingredients available to use out in the market. For fragrance, you have the option of going fragrance free. For alcohol, you can find other good delivery agents. See, my philosophy when it comes to skincare formulas and products is that I only want the best of the best. And if an ingredient is not necessary or not benefiting my skin, I don't want it. And that already by itself puts me in a difficult position because my expectations of a skincare product are already way higher than what the majority of the skincare industry can offer. So one of the reasons I don't like fragrance in my skincare is that I feel it is not necessary whatsoever. Like I was saying before, it does nothing to help with the efficacy of a formula. It doesn't contribute to the benefit benefit of the skin and only poses as a risk for irritation and sensitivity. Does this mean that you will experience sensitivity and irritation anytime you use a product with fragrance? Absolutely not. The majority of people and the majority of times people won't experience that. But the fact that it's not necessary in a skincare formula doesn't offer positive benefits for the skin and only poses as a potential allergen and irritant for the skin, I don't think it should be in a skincare product. And while yes it is nice if a product smells nice, I would personally prefer a product is formulated with only the best best of the best ingredients and leaves out any unnecessary ingredients that don't at all contribute to the betterment of my skin or its health. The second reason I avoid it on my channel, I know the majority of my viewers likely have a skincare routine that is chock full of fragranced products. The majority of people in my experience that are interested in skincare will have a good 10 to 20 products at least. And typically, and this is speaking as someone who also went through this as well, nearly all of them, if not all of them, will have a lot of fragrance. Because fragrance smells nice and you're not aware of the 
potential sensitivity that could come along with fragrance. My goal is to help my viewers substitute out at least one or two of their products for fragrance-free formulas in order to help them be more mindful about which products they feel are comfortable having fragrance in them, and just to hopefully help them reduce any potential irritation or sensitivity that they could be experiencing because they aren't aware that fragrance is irritating their skin. At one point, every single product in my skincare routine was fragranced to the gods, and it's a lot different now, and my goal is to help people be more mindful in that way as well. I know that the majority of people who watch my videos will not switch completely over to fragrance-free products and avoid fragrance like the plague. I know that. The majority of people who watch my videos will like find one or two products that are fragrance free and that's honestly good enough for me that's what I was hoping for just more mindfulness in purchasing and formulas the third reason is another philosophy I have, it's better to be safe than sorry. And that goes for my viewers and for me. I take my platform on YouTube really, really seriously. And I would never want someone to walk away from my videos excited to purchase a product, they buy a product and they have a severe or really bad skin sensitivity to it and have to deal with the aftermath of that. Now I know that's a false hope because it's bound to happen because people can have an allergic reaction to literally anything. But my goal is to reduce that risk as much as possible, which is why in the products that I recommend I like to only recommend products that have only the best of the best ingredients and are formulated with as little to no irritants as possible in order to avoid any potential irritating side effects in my viewers. But I would much rather them have a negative reaction to a product I recommended that is only formulated with products that'll improve the efficacy of the formula, soothe the skin, improve the performance and deliver results, than have them react to a product that was formulated with unnecessary fragrance. Because there is a difference for potential of positive results versus negative results. For example, it's the difference between having a sensitivity to niacinamide, an ingredient that has been shown to reduce sensitivity and irritation, control the sebum production with the skin, and brighten any dark spots within the skin, versus a sensitivity to Langaling oil, which is solely added just to smell nice. You know what I'm saying? And then fourth, finally, I really want to push for inclusivity. If I had a dollar for every person that thanked me for focusing on fragrance-free products in my videos because they felt they couldn't turn to anyone because no one was recommending fragrance-free products, I wouldn't need to do YouTube anymore because that's how many people struggle to find resources that recommend fragrance-free products. When I make my brand review truth about videos, half of my intent is speaking directly to the brand. I make them as a message message to the brand so that hopefully the brand will see my feedback, recognize that people are pushing for fragrance-free formulas in the hopes that in the future they will deliver fragrance-free formulas that we have a selection from. Adding fragrance to formulas only excludes a certain demographic of customers that could have really enjoyed the positive ingredients that your product is formulated with, but instead caters to people who are only craving a sensorial experience. It's the difference of people having no access to your skincare product versus people who are only using it because of how it smells. And being that the trend is that more and more people are struggling with skin sensitivity, contact dermatitis, and fragrance allergy, I think it's really messed up on the brand's part to not have fragrance-free formulas available to that specific customer demographic. Which is where on my channel, usually most of my frustration comes down to brands that don't offer any fragrance-free products, as opposed to ones that do. I think brands need to be more inclusive and recognize that an entire demographic of their customer base doesn't have access to specific products because of sensitivities and allergies and prioritizing them versus prioritizing just how a product smells. Overall, my goal is to push the conversation around skincare to ingredient awareness. Whether you agree or completely disagree with my personal skincare philosophy, my goal is for everyone in the community to be able to understand how to read an ingredient list, know what ingredients they want to look for, and then make their own decisions from there. That way people start purchasing skincare products not from the way they smell, but from the ingredients, the formula, and the brand's ethics. And for anyone who says that this isn't fair because the primary brand and selling point is their fragrance. That's a pretty shitty product if you ask me if the only reason that people are really interested in your product is because of how it smells. Just being honest. Now I'm not saying that everything should be fragrance free. Far from it. I know that a lot of people really like fragrance in their products. My intent is to push for inclusivity so that people who do want fragrance free products or can't use fragranced products because of allergies have the same opportunity to use and experience that skincare product formulated without fragrance. Whew. Now with all of this in mind, am I saying that I have the right opinion, that everyone else is wrong, that you should argue or fight with anyone who has a different belief? Absolutely not. If you guys look at literally any of the people that I've collaborated with, people like Susan Yara, James Welsh, they have completely different skincare philosophies than me, but I still respect their beliefs so much because they have taken the time to learn about ingredients, to learn about formulas, and make 
make their own decisions. And I completely respect that. And I recognize that my expectations and standards are very, very high. But like I said before, I only want the best of the best ingredients, no bullshit. And I want to make sure that I'm recommending those same ingredients and products to you guys, which is why I try to go fragrance free as much as possible. Whoo guys, I am winded and it is hot as in here because it has been over an hour that I'm filming this video. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Please, I just ask guys, be respectful. It's the stupidest thing in the world to actually get offended and angry and upset over something as trivial as skincare. Let's be adults. Let's be grown-ups. We can have a productive conversation and hopefully all of us can come out of this a lot more educated than we were before. And as always, if you guys have any more resources, please feel free to send them my way at any time. I am always down to learn more about these kinds of topics. And yeah, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week and I will see you guys in the next video. Mwah.